Okay, so yesterday was a huge news blowout for Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. We got what sounded like was maybe the last episode of the Suicide Squad Insider. Again, I hope that's not the case. I want more episodes of the Suicide Squad Insider in the future, just as much as I want you guys to scroll down and hit the like button. But of course, with yesterday's episode, we got the reveal that the Joker is going to be coming to the game as part of the post-launch content. And you know, in my original recording, I said that I wish they posted some sort of roadmap or at least some release information for the Joker DLC. And I had to cut that out of my reaction because it turns out that they did release that information yesterday after they dropped the Suicide Squad Insider. So we now have for us a pretty detailed roadmap of some content that's gonna be coming up for Suicide Squad later this year, as well as a release window for when Joker is gonna be coming to the game post launch. And what I'll say immediately is that Joker is dropping much sooner than we expected. In the roadmap that they provided, they mentioned that season one is going to begin for Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League as of March, 2024, just a month after the game is officially release on February 2nd and this first season is gonna come jam-packed with a ton of free content that's gonna be coming to the game one of those pieces of free content is gonna be a new playable character in the form of the Joker he's gonna come packed with all new gameplay new traversal and definitely some new skins and you know I'm not 100% sure how I feel about this design for the Joker I much prefer the original Arkham design for Joker and I really would have loved if that was the Joker we got to play as in this game and I know also some people have a bit of an issue that this is another Rocksteady game where the Joker is gonna be in it I get where some of you guys are coming from but he's such an iconic character and they're doing a really different unique take on him this time around and he's got some pretty fun looking traversal I will say that umbrella looks fast and fluid going into like a Fortnite glide I thought was interesting but also you know grinding on the rooftops knocking enemies around left and right that does look like a decent amount of fun in my opinion the traversal was my favorite part playing Suicide Squad Kill the Just League both when I played the alpha back in November and as well when WB Games brought me out to LA to get early hands-on with it. And so it looks like they're continuing with some really fun traversal with the addition of the Joker. But okay, on top of getting a new playable character in March as part of Season 1's free seasonal update, we're also going to be getting new boss fights with enemy variants, and it looks like they've shown a photo here of a Brainiac-infused Green Lantern and Superman. Yeah, these designs are pretty cool, but they also look very similar to the design of the Brainiac-infused Superman that we got from the ending of Injustice 2 where if you pick Superman. I'm also wondering what they mean by this being new boss fights with enemy variants. Now, obviously we're gonna be fighting Superman and Green Lantern within the base storyline of Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. So what exactly is new about facing them again, this time with a different look? Are they just gonna have the same attacks that they had in their regular boss battle, maybe infused with some of Brainiac's attacks if you face off against Brainiac in a boss battle in this game as well? I hope that when they say these are new boss fights, that they are genuinely new encounters with stuff that we hadn't seen in the base game. But hey, there's also gonna be a new playable environment coming to the game, and we saw a good bit of this throughout the Suicide Squad Insider that we got yesterday, and yeah, it looks like a decent amount of fun. I just wonder how big this environment is and how much of it we get to explore. Per the concept art that they put out last week, it looks like it is pretty much the daily planet that's been Jokerized, and the surrounding area is also very much Joker-themed. So I wonder how much here there is to explore, how many Easter eggs there will be to find, and how much fun it will be free roaming around this area versus the main open world. On top of getting all that stuff, we're also going to be getting new DC villain themed weapons. And these look to be Scarecrow and Two-Face infused weapons. And they kind of look cool, especially the Scarecrow ones. Then towards the bottom, it's mentioned that we're going to get new Riddler content. I'm very happy about that. If there's going to be more trophies that are added into the game, more riddles to solve, that's pretty awesome. And there's also going to be new activities plus strongholds being added into the game. Now, one of the strongholds we played when we got our early hands on back when WB flew us out to LA was that giant military gun where you had to shoot the weak points. I'm not entirely sure though if that's the only mission that is deemed a stronghold mission. We'll have to wait and see. Don't quote me on that. But there's also two banners here that say two episodes with a picture of Two-Face and Scarecrow. Then at the bottom it says and more. Meaning that on top of everything that I just showed for you guys, you know, new playable character, new playable area and everything, there's also going to be even more coming as part of a free update in March. But also I wonder what the 
those two banners of Two-Face and Scarecrow mean when they list there there's going to be two episodes? I know we're getting Scarecrow infused guns and seemingly Two-Face infused guns as well. But what exactly else is going on here? Could Two-Face or Scarecrow be introduced in this game in some way? That would be crazy. Considering this takes place within the Arkhamverse, I could very much see them bringing back Scarecrow in some way, doing something fun with them. And as well, since we have Joker coming from an else world, maybe they'll have a Scarecrow playable character or a Two-Face playable character down the line and them coming from else worlds as well. But hey, everything that I have mentioned here for this roadmap is all stuff that's going to be coming in the immediate future. As of March 2024 is when we get season one, the first free seasonal update for the game i'm sure though you guys want to know a bit about what's coming down the line they also showcase that here on the roadmap on the right side of the roadmap image it says future seasons two to four will include three new playable characters three new playable environments weapons themed gear sets activities mid-season updates and more and below are three images of what looks to be the three new playable areas that are going to be coming in these seasons one of which looks like it is arkham knights gotham obviously torn apart it's kind of ravaged but that is bleak island and that's the gcpd from arkham knight i don't know that's kind of cool to me in suicide squad kill the just league we get a brand new open world in metropolis but also there's an opportunity to return to the old gotham city from arkham knight in the suicide squad insider they showed what looked to be arkham Asylum as well so I wonder if this is just straight up Gotham and there's gonna be some crazy landmarks like parts of the Arkham Knight City and then also Arkham Asylum as explorable areas and hopefully Arkham City or at least chunks of Arkham City as well what a nostalgia trip that's gonna be and how different it will be to be free roaming around those areas as now the Suicide Squad with all their different traversal abilities but then also the image on the left is this frozen landscape which we saw glimpses of throughout that Suicide Squad insider and I wonder what character will be tied to this frozen area people have thrown out tons of names captain cold killer frost people have even said mr freeze all of those options i would be super down for i think killer frost is the one that interests me the most i mean killer frost was a part of the suicide squad team in that arkham animated movie so it'd be cool if they try to tie that together here in this game but i think as well considering the game has a lot to do with the gunplay and it's a third person shooter characters like captain cold or mr freeze would make more sense to be wielding a gun they also didn't provide any release windows as to when we can expect seasons two to four but then again with season one dropping just a month after the game releases i'd imagine that they're not very far away overall there's quite a bit here to look forward to with suicide squad kill the justice league i'm still skeptical about a lot with this game but at least as a live service they're creating a bit of hope and they're giving you guys a bit of a game plan of what to expect post launch that in my opinion is good i'm glad as well that all this content is going to be coming to the game for free i just hope that when it comes to the skins the battle pass all the stuff that they are going to charge you for that those prices aren't like outrageous the avengers game at certain points was charging you like 14 to 20 dollars per skin i don't want to repeat that because that is insane it's especially insane for a game that you're already paying full price for if things are like five bucks you know if things are fairly priced okay you know i think we can let slide i know some people have even mentioned it would be really awesome if we got a batman who laughs skin for the joker I would be down to pay $5 for that skin. $20 or honestly, even if we're pushing past 10, I still think that's really high for a game that we did have to pay full price for. And then I'm also intrigued as to what they're going to be doing with the battle pass and how they're going to include all that as part of these seasonal updates and what's going to be in the battle pass to give us incentive to want to purchase it. We'll see. Suicide Squad Kill the Just League is out in a week. Obviously, I will keep you guys updated on everything for this game, including all this DLC that's going to be dropping after it launches. Keep it locked to this channel subscribe turn on those notifications you don't want to miss a thing and with that being said let me know your thoughts in the comments section below what do you think about the official roadmap for this game and what piece of content gets you most excited sound off with your thoughts in the comments i've been caboose i'll see you guys later